Fantastic from that home. Fantastic shape. No fantastic Siggy. We're in the crib today. So, as you saw right at the very beginning, the Pioneer, the TSA653CH. My neighbor, him and I, I, I'm just, bear with me because this is, I'm trying to not make it too long, but I think this is going to have to be a long video. When you audio upgrade, finding the right installer is not easy because you get a lot of installers that just don't know what the fuck they're doing. Sorry about the foul language to one of my YouTubers. He does say that I use it profanity a bit too much. He is right. So I'm going to do my best to keep my, my profanity down. So finding a great installer is not easy. When you do find a great installer, it costs money. When is the right time to do what? You just don't go buy things because, oh, I like it. <clears throat> you want to do enough research to make sure that the product is going to be right for you. This is going into a 2000 Toyota Corolla. Rumor has it, and again, based off of rumors, I won't know until I get the car itself, that there are four six and a halfs in the car. It's been said back and forth that the that there are five and a quarters and six and a halfs and better than this vehicle. Again, I don't know. The vehicle is used. Who knows who's been in there? Who knows what? I won't know until I physically blow the car apart and find out what's in there. My neighbor embarked on buying these. I went on ahead and I took a look at it. This is what comes in the kit. So you got your six and a half, you got your rings, you got your mounting hardware, mounting hardware for the tweeters, you have your tweeters, and then you have your cabling. Notice there are no crossovers. It's in the line. Again, if the set works for you the way it is, not a problem. Unfortunately, this set that he embarked on is not right for him. What should have happened is that he should have done four two ways. We should have blown the car apart and find out who has been in there. Because it does have an aftermarket radio and he bought it with an aftermarket radio. Which are tall tale signs that someone has been in this vehicle other than the radio. I can almost guarantee they did something with these speakers. So, I don't know how much butchering. I don't know anything yet. All I know is there's an aftermarket radio that he, he bought the car with. And I can almost rest assured someone got to playing with the speakers. So, what should have happened, and again, I would have fabricated what needed to be fabricated for six and a half, two ways. He wants a little bumpity bump in this vehicle. He's already got two 12s in his Explorer, and he is, I want two 12s or two 10s in this vehicle. So, after looking over everything, I'm like, this, this kid is not right for you. Can you send it back? He goes, nope. He goes, I'm stuck with it. I said, okay. Um... He told me make it work. So I had to pump his brakes. Far too many installers are being told make it work. And then the end result, when we make it work, it's not to your expectations. The reason why it's not to your expectations is because you bought shit that we had to make work. What does that mean? Give me a second. I'm using this just as an example because I'm not about to sit there and dig through a whole fucking stash of amplifiers. So, and again, we're not worried about brand. We're just using this as just a basic, just as a fundamental. Here's your four channel. Okay. Now I'm going to run front, right. Okay. Okay. You got your front. I'm sorry. Your front, left, and right. And then you obviously have two more speakers. So you have your left and your right and your front, rear, <clears throat> on both sides. You got a total of four. Okay. You got one, two, three, four. Okay. Just so we're on a path here. These amplifiers, they're going to give you so much power and so much resistance. What am I talking about? This information right here. Pioneer is telling you that this is a 370 watt max. Okay. It's 85 watts RMS. And it is a 4 ohm impedance. It is a 4 ohm impedance when you take this and wire that to it. It's 4 ohms. The company is going to tell you at 4 ohms, you're going to get so much power out of this. Now, 
when you embark on mixed matching shit, needless to say, uh, things can go batshit. So when customers say, make it work, and you've got a bunch of mixed match parts, and we do our best to hook it up to this, and it don't sound right, that's because you bought shit just to make it work. Talk to the installer and figure out what's going to be the right thing for this situation. So he told me make it work. I said, look, I can unfuck your fuck up, but you're going to have to pump the fucking brakes. Because the moment you buy another thing, you can go down the street and get this installed. I'm not installing jank shit. We're going to do it right and we're going to do it right the first time. He didn't get it. Needless to say, um, I actually had a moment of his time. And we started talking downstairs in the basement. And I started breaking it down to him. He then understood the conversation after 30 minutes. So he's like, I'm, I'm really adamant on you using those. I said, let me guess, you bought them and now you got to keep them. Yep. I said, fine. So I got the dabbling into the internet. How do I turn that into a coaxial? Is there a solution to this? Do I have to fabricate something? So let me check the internet. Here's what I found. So the brand is CES. So I'm like, okay, six and a half. They're about like 10 or 13 bucks. I'm, I'm going to say around between 10 and $15 a piece. I said, okay, I give him the list. Buy another one, buy another set of those to match your existing set. Here. Buy four of these fuckers. So we got onto eBay and he talked to the gentleman and he said, yes, they're sold individually. So they're about 10 or $15 a piece. I said, fine. He goes, what are you going to do? I said, that's, that's not a you problem. That's a me problem. You, you, I point, you buy. That's it. You want me to make this work? You want one hell of a sound system? Just, I point, you buy. That's it. He tried to give me a budget. I won't tell you what the budget was, but it was, needless to say, I'm like, that's what you'll spend on amplifiers. I said, now, be honest with me. Are you financially stable? He said, yes. I said, okay. With that being said, why don't you let this cost you whatever it costs you before you guys lose your shit? Here's where I'm going with it. What do I mean? Let it cost you, let it cost whatever it is that costs you. We're not turning this into a $20,000 sound system. We are not doing that. But if there is an expense that needs to be spent, it needs to be spent. This was an expense that needed to be spent. So he spent $60 just on these rings. Now, I have to unfuck his fuck up. Keep in mind that I'm supposed to make this shit work. So he wanted me to go on ahead and say, well, well, what he wanted me to do was put those in the rear and then we'll put some janky two ways up in front. I said, no, that's jank. That's garbage. That is not a proper install. I said, let's make everything matching so everything sounds very uniform. You don't have to use all Pioneer, but let's just keep the mids and highs all Pioneer. I've messed with mids and highs and Pioneers. Pioneers, Alpines, and Rockfords. Those are my pick of my litter. Um, I've always used those three companies. Very seldom do I go out of my norm because of what I'm comfortable with. Again, for small systems. Once you start stepping up to big boy stuff, and I do mean astronomical big boy stuff, where you're using eights and tens as mid-range, that's where PR Vista holds the threshold on that. Again, small system, that stay on subject. So now, his sister is like, all right, what are you going to do? Again, me problem. So I'm telling you what I'm going to do. Here is the problem. So... This is 8 ohms. When I tap this with that, that did not give me 4 ohms. That gave me right around 2-ish. It kept bouncing, okay? Um, also, because it, I think it has some type of crossover on it. Um, don't get me wrong. I believe these are 
chokes. I, I forget. Needless to say, putting these two together did not give me a forearm load. I need a forearm load. So this was not going to work. This will work. That little guy ain't going to work. So <clears throat> I got the dabbling. I got to looking at it really good. And I'm like, okay, what can I do? So going to find out it's clipped. I said, okay, all hope is not lost. It's a two-piece. Took my heat gun, very gently heated this up, butterflied all the clips, would not come out. I said, okay, there's probably a little bit of thin adhesive in there, no biggie. A little bit more heat, ever so gently, got it out. Here's where things got interesting. So I'm like, okay, I get the tweeter out. How am I gonna go on ahead and hog this out? I have tools. I can hog it out. So there's the tweeter, and you can see the adhesive on there. So I'm like, okay, as I start looking at this, this part from here up is all plastic. This and the inside is dome shaped to physically trace that dome of that tweeter. I said, man, I know I got some decent steady hands but not enough to get me what i'm looking for i said all right let me talk to my buddy of mine who does cnc work over at the metal fabrication shop that i work i talked to him we brokered a deal i said let's try one first now all of this gets put together now just as a starting preview okay I'm going to mount this tweeter in here. That foam is there for a reason. I will get to that in just a second. Now that's just a tweeter mountain. I did notice. I said, wait. Yeah, I'm feeling that. You know what? I'm going to use this. I'm just not going to mount it and glue it. Again, we live in Chicago, so we got hot, cold, hot, cold. Last thing I need is to run, run into a situation where something fails and that tweeter falls out. So after explaining this to Al, my CNC guy and my programmer, I said, do me a favor, hog that out. So he physically CNC'd that out. Perfect. He goes, I'll laser cut you a plate. What are you looking for? I said, just, just make something, nothing too crazy. Again, you're not going to see it, but I just need this mounting plate so it doesn't fall. Just as a security measure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on ahead and I'm going to mount this. I'm not going to bore you with everything. So FYI, these screws are literally in here. And there it is. So I utilize the screws in there. They were tough to get in there. It was very snug. I had to take my time and very gently tighten them up. Let me put all this together. Let me mount it on there. And I'll show you where I'm at. See the look on my face? Man child just came down here. Give me a second. Hi, how are you? Crazy. Yeah. So. What'd you do? That's my son. So. All right. So the end result is this. Once I put it, everything all together. Again, backing plate screwed on. There's the end result. Way more than enough clearance. So, that wire is ran right through that rail. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Fortunate enough for me, and these six and a halfs are basically like an old school setup. Uh, some of the six and a half that I've been coming across are literally just a four bolt pattern and that's it. These have multiple holes, okay, as you can see. What benefited me is that ironically enough, when you clock the ring to the four holes, it just so happened to be right next to here. And it just so happened to be on that arm. What I ended up doing, what drew my son's attention is I was using my Dremel tool. It was something that I had forgotten to do. Literally, let me move that out the way. 
Okay, if you can see, thank you. Right here and right here, I managed just ever so gently just to notch it out here and here. And again, that's how I was able to tuck that wire in. And it completely clears the six and a half. So that was the solution to this problem. The solution is going to cost my client $200, not just for that one. So what he's getting for 200 bucks is the programming, the laser cutting, okay, for these ring adapters. I have to remove the tweeters. So I'm going to go on ahead. I will be cracking on this tomorrow so I can give it, give it to my, uh, to give it to Al. Um, right now it's basically like a mechanic rack time. You're tying up his rack, his lift. So I'm tying up his machine right now. He is on pause. He is not taking on any other work because right now that machine is already set up for this project. So I had asked him to give me till Monday to give him this. Because I needed to make a video. So. That's where we're at. However. The other thing that did catch my attention. You do remember the rings. So. Give me a second. Um, this is going to be a little difficult to do. So. I'm going to do my best. One handed. To do this. And again, doing my best. So I think what I need to embark on is maybe a GoPro or some shit. So when the holes line up, okay, and I'm going to clock this so that I make sure I get the holes right. That's it. So it's a little hard to see, but I hope you guys can see it. It is perfectly flat. Ironically enough, because of where that placement of hole is at, okay, see where the wire is at? Okay, and again, I'm holding it so it's not perfectly flat, but yeah, you guys get the gist of it. It clears it, to my surprise. So... This whole situation was a little bit of some luck. So, again, planning is everything. Trying to find an installer, I get it. Paying somebody, I get it. Um, when you desire something, always remember, and I do hope that this helps. What you don't get today, you will get bigger and better tomorrow. But you have to work for it. You have to go on ahead and achieve bigger and better. I've always lived by that rule. I've wanted things when I couldn't afford them. Um, it got to the point where I, it was just, it was eating me up. I'm watching people my age, 18 years old, with nice fancy cars and, and booming sound systems. And, and I, I, had a, I had a pickup truck. Finally, I, I went on ahead. I was working, needless to say, had some money. And four 18s and 17 mids and highs went into a single cab pickup truck. Needless to say, I was beating the hell out of it. And I was way louder than anybody else on the street. This is 30 years ago. So, bigger and better. Planning is everything if you have to buy things little by little. So, we are buying things little by little. He's in a hurry to get this done. I'm not in a hurry. You're going to slow your fucking roll. I'm not going to sit there and do jank work. Again, you guys seen the video. Give me a second. You guys seen the video on the Regal. I take pride in my work and I show my son. Take pride in your work. I show him how to turn a wrench. I also sh starting to show him audio. I'm going to move some of this stuff over. This is what's going to go in his vehicle. Four channel and a mono block. Um, that is the 1200. 
and there's your 500. I needed something a little strong. So again, my math is for a reason. This is gonna sound great. This really is. Again, this unfortunately cost him way more than what it should have. However, I had no choice. He backed me up into a corner where this now needs to get done. So everything is mounted in here. This is nice and tight. Uh, to my surprise, this ring actually kind of snaps in there. Um, I was really surprised. So again, I mean, it just snaps in there. I wouldn't just sit there and do that. But with, with the screws and everything, I can go on ahead and now mount this perfectly onto here. Will I be able to use these? I won't know until I blow the car apart and see where we're at. But at least we got this far. But I did like that end result. And I love the clearance. So um, that foam that I had back here is for the tweeter. So that it has the ability to basically cushion it. So what I was doing is there was a gap. So pushing the tweeter actually came out and it stopped it. However, there was a gap here. To fill that void, I used the foam. And that's all it is. Just this. And you get them at different thicknesses. Learn a lot from a lot of people. Learn that from five car, car stereo. Five star car stereo. Sorry about that. Um, cardio fabrication is a really good one. So... To anybody who's embarking and you are doing stuff, planning is everything. So this is going to be multiple videos on this Toyota, on what we're going to do, how we're going to do it. Um, I'm still trying to figure out if we're going to do one or one or two subs. I would prefer just the one because this is going to be way more than what he thinks he can handle. Um, he's got two 12s and his 12s sound great but they're highly under, underpowered. This, the way I got this set up, there's going to be wiggle room for growth, but I also want to be careful on how big we grow. So he's trying to beat the hell out of this thing, and I'm just trying to get him to tone it back. Uh, trying to beat the hell out of this damn car is going to end up costing him buku dollars. <coughs> so, but he is okay. He did tell me, he goes, I will... He understood his mistake. He understands that I'm trying to work hard to go on ahead and get him what exactly what he's looking for and to give him the craftsmanship that he deserves. And always remember, it's not only he deserves that type of craftsmanship, so do you. So don't skimp, okay? That's something that you want to go on ahead and you want to embark on yourself and you want to learn how to do audio, do it, learn it. Do it right. It may take you some time, but do it right. So... That's it for this video. Um, I will keep you guys posted as we go along in this lovely Toyota Corolla adventure. Uh, I will share with you RCAs, what we're using for RCAs, what we're using for cabling. We will embark on that as we start to go along. All right? So, holla at your boy. I'm watching you guys. Holler.